So today I want to hit on a topic that seems to be really on fire, and that's champagne. Now, in the last two years, the popularity of champagne has really just gone through the roof, um, you know, along with other sparkling wines as well. Uh, we talked in the past about how to make white wine, red wines, dessert wine. So let's look at how we make champagne. It's actually quite a labor-intensive process. In order to make champagne, you actually have to do two fermentations. So you're picking your grapes, and for champagne, your grapes are both white and red. But the red grapes, for the most part, are going to be pressed off the skins, and so you're fermenting the clear white juice on its own. So you have white juice from white grapes, Chardonnay primarily, and you have white juice from red grapes, from Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. You ferment these, and then you make your blend. And once you have your blend, the wine gets bottled. And so you have these thousands of bottles of wine, and each bottle has to undergo a secondary fermentation. So what does that mean? It means that the bottle gets opened up, and they place inside a small amount of sugar dissolved in wine and yeast. Then the bottle gets stoppered up again and that sugar with the yeast creates the second fermentation. And what does the fermentation do? It creates a little bit of alcohol and it creates CO2. Bubbles, right? So that's where the bubbles come from in Champagne. And as I say, it's, it's very labor intensive. You have, to, you have to dose each bottle. And the other thing that you have to do is once each bottle is dosed, is you have to get that yeast down to the neck of the bottle so that you can take it out. So that when you finally bottle the champagne, you put the final cork in, you have a nice clear bottle of wine without a lot of yeast floating around in it, right? So, the process that they use to do that is called riddling. And in the old days, they had these wooden racks where the bottles go in neck first at about a, a 45 degree angle. And every day, somebody has to go around and turn the bottle slightly. And that turning of the bottle forces that yeast to then go down towards the neck. <laughs> right? Nowadays, they have um, you know, automatic riddlers where again, you have the bottles at an angle, but then the machine sort of shakes, shakes the bottle slightly and gets that yeast down to the neck, where it then has to be <laughs> frozen. So the bottle gets dunked in a, in a super cold brine solution so that the wine in the neck, along with that yeast, freezes. They pop the cork, that, that ice block pops out, and they put the final cork in. So wow, what a complicated process. <laughs> Who came up with this? <laughs> but in the end, you have the most marvelous beverage, right? Champagne. <laughs> Who doesn't love champagne? So that's known as uh, making wine in that fashion is the traditional champagne method. Other wines are made that way. Um, cava from Spain is made that way. A lot of California sparkling wines are made that way. There are other wines that are made differently say Prosecco, the process they use there is they put all the wine in a tank and they add the dose of sugar and yeast to the tank and the secondary fermentation takes place in the tank and they bottle the wine from there. And the last method that's uh, sometimes used is you put the wine in a tank and you just bubble CO2 through the tank. <laughs> and that's, you know, kind of how they make soda, but you can also make sparkling wine that way. But you're not going to get as, uh, as fine a, what they call the mousse, which is the, the, the effervescence, the feeling of those bubbles. That's what you get that's, uh, that the champagne method brings that these other methods uh, really can't achieve. So that's how you make champagne. The other question we get all the time is, is how do you store champagne? So 
Champagne gets stored just like any other fine wine. You put it in your wine cellar at, at 53 to 57 degrees on its side, and it'll age beautifully. And in fact, you know, the CO2 acts as kind of a preservative, so champagne ages can age for quite a long time. So the other thing, that, the question that people ask is, why does champagne sometimes have a vintage and sometimes not have a vintage? <laughs> so the answer to that is, um, in champagne, you don't have a vintage every year because some years are better than others. <laughs> well, it's a cool climate region, um, and so that's, uh, the ripeness of the grapes can vary quite a bit. So what champagne houses do is when they, ha when they have a really good year and everything ripens up beautifully and they got really nice fruit, then they'll declare a vintage and they'll bottle a champagne with just that vintage wine. But in most other years, or most years, the years that aren't declared, what they do is they, they preserve wines from previous years. And so they've got these older wines aging in, in casks, and they'll make a blend of the latest vintage mixed with some of these older vintage wines. And the idea behind this is to create a, a more consistent style. So uh, they're making what, what would be known as a, a house style using the wines that that house produces most frequently and <laughs> balancing it out with what they get from the current vintage. So it's kind of a different way to go. Um, but what it gives you is a, a very consistent wine year after year. You know, even it's a, if it's a non-vintage wine, you know that you like a particular house's wine, you know that it's gonna be consistent year after year because they're carefully making this blend with whatever they have from that vintage and from their older reserve wines. And then if they have a, a fabulous vintage, they're gonna bottle a vintage wine. Um, so there's the other kind of champagne that you see other than just the regular uh, white variety and that's rosé. And so how do they make rosé champagne? Well actually it's uh, a different method than uh, making most rosé wines. They're gonna harvest those grapes, as I, as I mentioned. You'll have white grapes and you'll have red grapes. And maybe they'll take a portion of the red grapes and they'll actually ferment them into red wine. So they'll macerate the grape skins with the juice and make a, a red wine. And then when they do their blend, they'll have their white wines that they're blending in. And they'll put in a little bit of this red wine just to give it a nice rosy, tinge and then the rest of the process is the same. The wine gets bottled, they do the secondary fermentation in the bottle and that's how you make rosé champagne. So it's different than other other rosés. You're actually blending white wine and red wine which is uh, not normally how rosé is made as uh, <laughs> we talked about in the video about rosé wine making. The other question we get is about the glasses. Um, champagne is often uh, and most frequently probably consumed in a, in a flute glass like this. The idea behind that is to preserve the bubbles so there's less surface area on top of the wine for those bubbles to dissipate because you want to keep those in the wine because you want that freshness, that wonderful refreshing mousse as I mentioned before. Um, but, you know, sometimes just a, a really fine white wine glass can do just as well. Um, as long as you're not going to let it stand around for a really long period of time <laughs> to let the bubbles <laughs> dissipate, you're probably okay drinking your champagne just out of a really nice white wine glass. So, that's your champagne story. <laughs>